Hey YouTube, JP Dillon. Welcome to part 4 of the 70s Zenith Chroma Color 2. Today we're going to focus on replacing the uh, high voltage regulator cap and see if we can't get into color troubleshooting. The oil cap in question is this guy down here. It's a 3.5 microfarad at 450 volt. And the replacement is quite a bit smaller. Uh, it's more or less just a a motor phasing cap, same value, 3.5 microfarad, 450 volts AC. And then I've got some schematic diagrams printed up for the color board. We're going to see if we can troubleshoot a little bit of that. And hopefully it's nothing too scary. Uh, but anyway, let's take a look at the capacitor that's supposed to go in its place. Well, this is the little dude. I got this from Miami Electronics. It was about $8, including shipping. And if you want to have a good reference to how big it is, there you go. It's not big at all. In fact, the old capacitor is closer to the size of that than the new thing is. So, what we've got to do is get this where that guy is down there. So, unsoldering it, unclamping it, all that sort of thing. So, uh, I think the way that I'm going to approach it is to unclamp the oil can first. Uh, get that out of there and then probably end up drilling a small hole to mount the new capacitor in, wire it up, and go from there. So since obviously that's going to require both hands uh, and I don't have a, a, a mount tall enough to mount this on while I'm working on it, you guys are just going to have to use your imagination. So pulling it out, we see that we do have a mounting hole there. And this is it. It's a General Electric three and a half microfarad 440 volt. Let's test it. I'm pretty sure it's open, but let's find out. Now I'm not going to be able to test it at 440 volts. But let's see what the LCR meter says. It's 3.63. But that doesn't mean it's good. The television had symptoms of it being bad. Let's see what the uh, infamous ESR meter says. Yeah, the ESR meter says this is no good. It's weird how it's bobbling around too. So there's definitely something wrong with this. Because if we look at the new one, the new one tests much better. See, if we test the new one, the new one pegs the meter. Almost. So, the old one is decidedly bad, but the symptoms kind of showed that anyways, so the new one's going to go in. Alright, so there she is. She's now mounted and wired up, so we're going to see if that makes our blooming problem go away. And if it does, then we'll get on to uh, dealing with the color ailment, or lack thereof. High voltage service warning. I'm always amused by these little notices that they tell everybody here. Alright, back together it goes. Alright, all back together. Let's see if it uh, runs now or if it wants to blow up. We're going to see if that blooming problem is gone now. Give it a second. And there we go. No more bloomy bloomy. I mean it does the tiniest little bit, but who cares. That's all over and done with. Now I can crank this up and it only blooms a little bit, which is really nice. Before it would get like three times the size. So, happy about that. So now all we've got to do is focus on the fact that we still have no color. Although my video response does change slightly when I crank up the color. So, now we need to get to that, and we have troubleshooting aids for that, so 
let's get to it. Well, actually, before we get too embedded in it, let's look at the simple stuff first. Bad connections on the module, problems with the uh, chip sockets and things like that. And if we can't get it to come back that way, then we'll do some more heavy-duty troubleshooting. So as far as removing the color board, we're just going to turn these little retention clips uh, so that obviously the board can pass by. Excuse me just a second. And then very carefully take the board off of here. I notice that there's a lot of fuzzies and corrosion on these ICs. So I'm hoping that that's just going to be the straightforward solution. Hell, I might even bypass the sockets and just solder the things in, but yeah, one thing at a time. So I'm going to get the board out and then we'll take a look at it and see what we're up against. So taking a look at this board, I can already see that there's some not very good soldering that's starting to break down on these IC sockets and the switches here. Looks a little crystallized, looks a little tired. You can see the darkened areas of the board here where the heat buildup is kind of taken over. And you have to watch out for these IC sockets. They're old and primitive. And it looks like actually somebody was scraping on that one. So there may be an issue there. Uh, the part numbers look like 274-221 or 221-42 and 221-69 over here. And we'll check a couple of these uh, tantalum capacitors to have a tendency to fail. So, And then we also have to deal with the fact that these connectors here get lossy. And it probably wouldn't hurt to solder them either because the soldering on them doesn't look all that great. So we're going to try all the remedial stuff first. And then if we can't get that going, we'll do more thorough troubleshooting. And I'm going to pull these ICs out very carefully and clean these sockets because they do have a tendency to oxidize. So I'm going to get to that first. Alright, so I have resoldered lots of uh, questionable connections. I have scraped the leads on the ICs and cleaned the IC sockets, both of them. I've checked all the capacitors, which seem to be good. I've checked all the resistors, couldn't find any out of tolerance or that were open. I've uh, resoldered all of the uh, connectors here because some of them were kind of loose looking. Cleaned them all, cleaned all the mating pins that the socket sits on. So now it's just a matter of uh, seeing if that did anything. I don't know if it did or not, but we'll find out. And I'm not hoping for much. That's new. Okay. Alright, well I was one pin off, so hopefully I didn't murder anything, but as you can see, we're back to square one again. There's no... Uh, no change. I still have to take care of that brightness issue, but there is still no color. And my blooming thing seems to be back. That's weird. Although I am making it like excessively bright. How weird. But yeah, no fancy color bars. And playing with the service switch didn't help me either. So we need to do some more extensive troubleshooting on the uh, chroma board and see why it's doing what it's doing. But at least we got the uh, high voltage capacitor replaced, which for some reason helped for a little while. And now it doesn't appear to be doing much else. So I'm still getting some blooming. But nowhere near as much as I used to. Maybe that's just is how it is. Or maybe there's something wrong in the regulation circuit, don't know. But anyway, uh, let's get it on a bench and figure out what we're up against next. Alright, it's J.P. Dillon, 
and this is part four of the Chroma Color 2 debacle. Yeah, the keyboard's filthy. Uh, I'm sure that's the first thing everyone will notice. So, here is the schematic for the Chroma section provided by Shane Go. And I've taken all the measurements on all the test points and everything looks good except for pin 13. Lucky 13. And I'm supposed to have 4.79 volts there and it's supposed to be oscillating uh, 2 volts peak to peak of the chroma information. And there is zero volts there and there is no activity. Now, looking back at the circuit again, that voltage has to be derived from within the IC because as you can see everything is capacitively decoupled. And I do have continuity through the coils, the little tiny transformers alive. Uh, I've pulled the two capacitors, the 0 .0022 and 24 picofarads, they're fine. The 30 picofarad on the other side there is fine. All those resistors check good. I also thought maybe, hey, maybe it's the color killer circuit. And so I checked all the values here. Nope, I'm getting appropriate voltages on pin 6 and pin 15. Uh, so we're good there. I also check the input and we do have activity at the input uh, but nothing on pin 13 and just for grins and giggles I came down here to the the band pass and reference oscillator IC2 and took all the measurements here and everything is within about 10 percent uh, <clears throat> it's about maybe 10 percent higher than what the schematic posts but it's all there and so I assume this is fine. Uh, but coming up to here, looking at pin 13, there's no activity and no voltage. It's zero. And there's no shorts to ground either. Uh, which would be very hard to do considering that circuit would be, uh, if there was a short in one of those capacitors, would also pull down pin 14 and pin 12. So, and since that hasn't happened, uh, I'm going to guess that the 221-69 IC, which is this little bugger here, is probably not working correctly. This is 2019, and as of you know 2019, you can still get these in great quantities. They're not scarce or anything. It might change later on. I've gone over everything else on this board. I've checked every component, I've checked all of the voltage measurements while it's running, and I really honestly can say that this is the only thing that's left. I've got good feedback from the flyback. Uh, I've got, like I said, color information, burst information on this uh, reference pin here. Uh, pin 3 it was, and that's working. So really my only thing now is to uh, replace that IC and see if that brings this little board back to life because I have no color activity whatsoever and no voltage on pin 13 there's supposed to be about 5 volts and there's no oscillation either so that's where we're at with this thing so I'm gonna wait for the chip to get here and we're gonna pop it all back together and hope that it works alright so I got these from Consolidated Electronics and they were relatively inexpensive focus here maybe not maybe so 221 69s uh, I think I got two of them for like $13 including shipping so why not I wasn't getting any activity on the uh, pin that was generated from within so let's just see here that's going to be the notches on the left so that's going to be pin one and we're just going to stick this guy in here might have to bend some pins a little bit. I hope not. Might just go right in there. And it does. So I'm hoping that uh, since that voltage was completely missing, uh, the, the chip is the problem. 
I've ummed out all of these coils. Uh, I've checked all these capacitors in the bandpass circuit here and all that. None appear to be open or shorted or leaky that I can tell. Doesn't mean that one isn't bad, I just I can't figure it out from here. All the voltages on this, except for pin 13, were okay. And everything here, excuse me, everything here was okay too. Uh, so just pin 13 here. So I guess we'll fire it up and see if we get our color back. All right, so the answer to that question is yes and no. Uh, we did get our color back, but as you can see, it's rolling. So the uh, color oscillator frequency is off. Uh, but we have color where we had no color before and we can see that the oscillator is speeding up as we're viewing this so it may be that I can tweak this thing you know let's get some freeze components and see or, or freeze mist and see if we can't uh, affect the roll maybe revealing the defective component hang on a second alright so I got my good old-fashioned freeze spray and I'm going to see if I can freeze anything to change this. So I'm going to do the crystal oscillator first. That really pissed it off. The camera doesn't show it, but it's rolling really fast for me. Okay, so here's the adjustment slug next to it. That slowed it down a lot. And let's see here. I'm going to start tweaking some things. That's the setup switch off. That's the setup switch on. Uh, color killer adjustment pot. There we go. Frequency adjustment pot. Not locking in though. Up oh, there we go. Man, that is really sensitive. But it will lock. Okay. Yeah, but the colors are all wrong. And if I adjust the tin control, you can see it goes out of sync again. Let's put that at about midpoint. And let's tweak that again. So something's drifting here because it will lock in for a moment and then drop out of lock. You can see here by making the 3.58 adjustment that I can make it roll color one way or another. But I shouldn't it shouldn't be that sensitive. It should just work. And the fact that I don't have correct color either, if I try to correct it, then it rolls. So I think that oscillator. Let's spray that oscillator crystal again. I think that may be defective. Because if I spray that, then the color goes nuts. And the camera doesn't show it because of the reef the uh frame rate but it's going crazy right now so I have some replacement crystals there are just locked back in again after the crystal warmed up I'm gonna replace that color crystal uh, this guy back here I'm gonna replace this guy and see if that snaps things back in because oh, it's off drifting again but we made an improvement we've got color at least so let's change the crystal out now what I've got are these ones from newer sets that are a smaller form factor, but uh, given that this board only runs on 24 volts, I don't think it's going to care too much. It's just a matter of getting it soldered in here. I might have to put some extension leads on it or something, but let's pop the old one out and fit a new one in and see what happens from there. Alright, so there's the new crystal in there. And you can see I just ex soldered an extension lead on here and got it in there. It doesn't have to be pretty, it just has to work. So, let's go ahead and get the board back in. And 
it just fits right in there. I'm not going to lock it into place yet until I know that it works. I've already crimped all of these connectors on these cards, so in theory, it's going to bite down. All right. Let's see if that uh, let's see if that changes anything. Wakey, wakey. All right. So I still got rolling color. That's pretty severe. And yeah, let's see if I can lock it in this time. Nope, it's still touchy. And if I turn the setup switch, flip the setup switch one way, I got no color. I don't know if that's how it's supposed to be. You can get close, but it never wants to want to stay in the right spot. And I know for a fact that that's the wrong set of colors. If I turn the tin control one way or another, you get close, but it ain't right. So something else is still going on here, I'm not sure what. Maybe now that we have color on the screen, we can kind of tweak crosstalk adjustment, and that just makes things noisier in the picture. Let's see, your color killer, I believe. Yep, there's our killer control. Yeah, let's see. You are. You look like color intensity or some such thing. If we turn our color level all the way up, overly saturate it, and then set that as a threshold. That makes it roly poly. funny how when you turn the color amp up it wants to roll wants to roll the picture I think that's the god I keep moving the camera sorry about that guys I'm um, just playing around at this point when you turn the color level down it wants to roll interesting So let's just back that off a little bit there. I also noticed the distortion with that setting that changes. Let's see if we can get rid of the distortion. Yeah, I'm just playing around at this point. I think it sure does get touchy. So that's way too much. We at least got that to lock in. Now yeah, we're getting there. Got to find that sweet spot. All right starting to look better. I should really go through and do all the setup adjustments on this. It should be that at the 
Oh, the chromatic's terrible. Ugh. Look at how intense that is. I know there's some sub adjustment for that. That just looks awful. Yeah, let's see if we can get rid of the distortion in the picture again. Sorry about the blanking. I'm just kind of playing around with it at this point. Let's see now. My grayscale is kind of off too. But, I mean, we've got... We've got color. Uh, yeah, we got color. It's not as bright as I'd like it to be. screw with our fine tuning a little bit that makes it like super sensitive and then we've got this video peaking thing I wonder if there's a control back here for that yeah the peak picture control we can toy with that a little bit and mess with our video response All right, well nominally, let's reset the timer here. It's looking much better. We still got this issue with, uh, okay, so we gotta mess with the color killer setting so those little colored flakes go away. There we go. That looks better. Yeah, let's go to full rainbow. That looks much better. Okay. You know what's interesting is that when I crank the contrast up, it only gets a little bit brighter, but it blooms a lot. The convergence on this is a little crummy, too. I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of crummy. So, let's do a uh, kind of a quick convergence on this thing. Alright, so with the Delta Gun tube, you have to converge red and green and then blue on top of red and green. So the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to come back here and we're going to locate our blue screen, which is this guy right here, and we're just going to turn him all the way down. And then you've got your convergence setups, which is usually blue, green, and red is on the other side. And you can see that the red is a little bit off. The red's a little bit to the right of the green, and you'll see as I move these, see how green moves at an angle like that? So what I try to do is move them a little bit at a time. So I'm going to try to move the green about 45 degrees down from the red, and then we'll move the red so that it converges on top of the green. It's tricky. I really hate this. This is where a lot of patience is needed. I think we might.
might switch to a line pattern here in a second. Let's try that instead. Not quite what I wanted. One, one, zero, one. There we go. So we can see here that that's still not great. That's pretty damn close, though. You're just looking for the middle at this point. So let's uh, flip our service switch back. And I'm going to redo the setup adjustments just because so red, magenta, and green makes for a gray line. We'll flip this back, and we've got it pretty close. The reds look a little hot on the drive, but okay, so now that we've got that going on, let's adjust our blue vertical, and we can see the blue line move up and down until we get it on top of the red and green one. And if you, this one doesn't need it, but back here is what you called your blue lateral adjustment. Sorry about that. That's that magnet on this collar here. This one slides up and down usually with a thumb wheel that's that guy right there so if we turn the thumb wheel you can see it go from left to right this one's frozen in place I don't want to break it because I don't need to do anything with that so let's go to a broader thing here and we can see the center is pretty good we have a little bit of error up top here center is good this is crummy right here the side we got blue bowing down here and a little bit of blue blowing down here this is really bad so let's look at our horizontal red green bottom which is usually labeled here somewhere uh, yeah it's upside down of course So we want red, green, horizontal bottom, which is all the way on the left here. It should be that guy right there. Let's see what happens when we tweak him. Yep, there we go. It corrects that a little bit. Not great though. Uh, maybe I need vertical red green bottom vertical stripes All right, let's try red green vertical bottom which is directly next to that There we go that corrects that much better And let's see if we can work on that red and green and blue horizontal left side so looking back here, it'll focus, blue horizontal left, and red green, come on, where is it, red green horizontal left, and that's going to be that guy down there. Yeah, we're just going to try to converge red on green. And then blue on green. Oh, look at that. Not bad. Now, you're never going to be able to get the far edge perfect because this will start to bow. But you want to get a something close. And let's see if we can touch up our red-green vertical left. And where was that at? Red-green vertical left. It's the one at the very bottom. That red guy right there. Let's go tweaky tweaky. And again, don't turn that too far, or it'll affect your center. 
Okay. And that's looking better. We've got a little bit of blue error on the side here and red-green error on the side. We need to get non-insulated or insulated tools for that. This is just a little alignment tool set I got on eBay. You need it to turn those cores there. And we're looking at red, green, horizontal right, which is probably that dude right there. If it'll focus, come on. Yep, red, green, horizontal right. That's the bottom coil. And that fits right in there. And my five minute timer went off on my little handheld. Okay. So let's see if tweaking that cleans up the. Uh, yeah, it does a little bit. Uh, I don't think there's any horror, uh, blue vertical adjustment. Let's see which one's blue right. It looks like that guy down in there, the top core. So let's get that in there. And I'm making you guys dizzy, sorry about that. And let's correct that a little. That's looking better. Oh uh, yeah, much better. Uh, let's see, as far as I know, there's no blue vertical right. Blue horizontal left, red green, red green, red green. Yeah, there usually isn't on these. You gotta kinda have a happy medium of the blue lateral and everything else. But this lateral magnet is just frozen. I'm not going to mess with it because then I might distort this. Uh, so anyway, let's go back to beautiful color. Mm, it looks so nice. So nice to have that. We got a little bit of distortion here. The AFC on this is so wrong. When I turn AFC it on, it detunes, so there's something going on there. And da -da -da -da. That color is just so fucking sensitive. It's like you just barely touch it. And that has to do with this intensity thing here. Let's turn that down a little. It's like excess. Look at how much distortion you get. Crank that mother up. And that's like all the way down, too. So let's turn that. And let's see if we can adjust L crosstalk. Like that's your setup switch there. Lock that in. It switches awfully dirty. Wow. Yeah, super dirty switch. Looking good though. We've got convergence there. And we've got to adjust our killer again. And da -da -da. Yeah, that looks good. It's weird how it keeps freaking out. It's not a connection on the board. It's only when I touch that switch, that setup switch there, which is so freaking dirty. All right, let's shoot some contact cleaner into that. Yeah, after the contact cleaner treatment, much better. I'm not thrilled about this uh, color distortion here and the sensitivity of this control. And there's obviously something going on with the AFT, because when I turn on the AFT, it just detunes. So... But otherwise, it looks pretty awesome.
I think we'll get a converter box on it next and we'll see what it looks like. Uh, my only other gripe so far is that the focus is still a little soft on it. It's not razor sharp like I'd expect and I can kind of tweak it a little bit. But that's really as good as it gets. So it may be that big fat resistor that's uh, on the ground side of the tripler has gone up in value or something. We got a little bit of error here, horizontal red green. Let's tweak that one last time. Yeah, that's the bottom one. Never quite gets perfect, does it? Never quite does. Gets close though. I mean, I can keep turning it forever. And it only gets marginally better and then the center gets off a little bit. Well, anyway. I'm overall pretty happy with it. It could have gotten a lot worse. It converged okay. It's got decent color. We've progressed pretty well on it. So really, the last thing to do is to... Uh, let's see if I can get rid of a little more of this color distortion here. This crosstalk adjustment. I think it's... Uh, a little uglier. I'm almost tempted to solder that freaking switch into one position and just leave it there. That's way too touchy. I think that's what I'll do. Because when you get it in the sweet spot it looks great, otherwise your color goes away. So that's good enough for me really. That looks pretty awesome. So I'm going to solder that switch into place because you, you can see the color keeps flickering brighter and dimmer and brighter and dimmer. And then we'll hook it up to a converter box and see how it really looks. Yeah, with the little service setup switch soldered in place it's a, a much better picture now. Much less problems with saturation and all that sort of thing. And I got a nice rainbow gamut which I didn't have before greens look a little better too it's amazing how all of these stupid little adjustments and things make it work well not really there's a scientific reason but we've come a long way it's got a decent set of color bars on it it's converged it's got although not perfectly stable high voltage it's better I mean, the AFC is wrong, which is weird. Of course, it's locking in now. It didn't do that before. There could just be a whole bunch of I don't know. It's a set with issues, but we've conquered most of them. I also noticed that this thing, the CRT, takes a really long time to warm up. And when I tested this, it seemed good, but maybe that's also why I've got the blooming problem. It's like I'm cranking the high voltage up more on the grid, but it only gets marginally brighter. So I think it might be worth it to explore uh, the probability that the CRT is a little weak on this. That would kind of bother me, but oh well. It does hang on to that color picture a lot more. A little bit dimmer colors there. 
Yeah, we'll see. Let's see if now that the setup switch is in place, I can tweak the other stuff a little bit more. I'm adjusting this crosstalk so that there's minimal color noise in the colors. And then we've already got our color killer adjusted. All right, I need to stop messing with it before I break something. Let's get a converter on it and see how it looks. Okay, so before we get into putting it back together, I want to do one final thing, and I want to check the CRT again. Because when I initially tested it, I thought it was good, but the fact that it takes so long to warm up, and cranking the brightness and contrast just yields blooming and not more brightness, I just want to kind of stick this on here and see what the readout is. We'll start with the simple Beltron. Bring it up to about 5.5 volts. I might have to switch adapters. I don't remember if it's this one or the other one that works. So blue comes right up and the other two follow. Looks okay. That red's really strong. Uh, so again, simple emissions tester. We do our little cleaning and adjustment here. The little lamps should light up, and they do. So this is this is still good, just as I remember it. Now, one thing you have to remember, though, is that this is a simple tester. Good for rejuvenating weird tubes, but it's still a simple tester. Uh, let's see what another one of my CRT testers says. All right, so if you want a really sophisticated CRT tester, this is the Sencor CR7000. Uh, this was like a $1,200 piece of equipment back in the 1990s. It was probably one of the last real CRT rejuvenators that you could buy on the open market. Uh, very fancy. I picked this up from a television shop here in San Diego that more or less had given up on CRT servicing and got it... Uh, for a real screaming deal and came with the original booklet and most if not all of the adapters. So this is a, a 17 VAK P22. Uh, so hopefully I have this adapter. This is adapter number two. I forget if they're numbered or not numbered. This is a seven, eight. Worst comes to worst, I can use the universal. Uh, five, three, one, and two. All right, so there's your little adapter there. So we'll just plug this guy in. If it's going to work, maybe you have to... Nope, that's the right side. It sure is a snug fit. There we go. Very snug fit. And this is going to need two hands to put the cable on there. All right, so cable's hooked up. We're ready to go. Uh, let's see. Let's make sure our CRT type is a video two. And let's turn this on. And we see that our filament voltage comes right up to 6.3 volts. So I'm just going to wait for it to warm up. And let's check our G1 short. Everything looks good. HK short. Everything looks good. And let's see. Right now it says the cutoff is crummy. Cutoff's really touchy on this. It's getting better as it warms up.
and as we can see now it's changed from bad to good and let's go to our emission and we can see it's not great but it still says it's pretty good the uh, red seems to be the strongest of them all so yeah this is a uh, an okay CRT the gun tracking is okay the blue is a little crummy uh, but there you go there's your ultimate sophisticated CRT tester it still says this is usable the blue looks like it's fading a little bit but And our cutoff changing in this, we the longer it's on. So yeah, so I guess now we can uh, do the final test. All right, so here we are. We've got pretty good color. But we've got a major, still got the major high voltage issue here. It's blooming like crazy again. And when there's lots of picture information, it sharpens up and it blooms. But when it's not bright, it's small and defocused. Also, when I turned it on this time, the degaussing circuit did not start. So I got to find out what's wrong with that thing. This thing has just been a nightmare of problems. but I mean it's really bright and when the picture's filling the screen it's sharp but uh, when the picture's not that bright or it's not filling all the screen it's very defocused but the colors look good apart from some purity problems caused by the lack of degaussing so I need to figure out what's going on there but you can see like right now the no signal thing is like so blurry the scan lines go away it's not very clear and like that is really super defocused so this thing's just totally weird yeah and my digital's gone out again and the University of California system Janet Napolitano is here in San Diego to encourage local students that see with a with a full screen it blooms to the point where you get massive overscan but it's it's kind of sharp but otherwise uh, when the picture's not there and it shrinks back down it's blurry again so we've got some sort of it's too hot it's like it's But I think for now it's time to put this one on the back burner because it's really just kind of irritating me. Ooh, channel one. I mean, when it's displaying a picture, it's pretty kick ass, but otherwise, eh. By intensifying U.S. sanctions, the administration will now cap the amount of money U.S. This thing's coming a long way, but it ain't where I want it to be yet. He spoke why he originally redacted some in that river is the county line. So I don't know. What do you guys think? And we're on the lookout. I kinda wanna move on to another project. This one's just kind of irritating me. It's always got something wrong with it. Yeah, it's getting better, but how much longer am I gonna have to spend on this thing to get it right? And so now it's got more issues. I think I want to take a quick measurement of that B voltage and see if the B voltage is solid and the high voltage problem is truly a high voltage problem or if that cap we replaced really isn't good enough. Alright, so we're hooked up to our uh, boost cap here <clears throat> and we've got 423 volts. And when I crank the brightness and or contrast, we see that it only drops two volts. Here's all the way down, here's all the way up. On the picture, here's all the way down, and here's all the way up. So, 
it's not a B regulation problem, it's really a high voltage problem because this stays rock solid even when I'm playing with the brightness and stuff. So something else is going on here in the high voltage circuit, not sure what. And you see these two leads down here that are sticking up. That's where the degaussing thermistor used to be. So it obviously broke apart and that's why we don't have a degauss anymore. And, but I didn't see it rolling around in the set so it's caught somewhere or whatnot. So yay, more fun there. Alright, so checking everything nominally. All the voltages in the B section are stable and everything. So we've got some high voltage issues which are preventing proper regulation. And uh, I'm hoping it's not the new tripler that I installed. Although anything's possible, NTE isn't the greatest thing. Somebody's put the four lead safety cap in there. Uh, <clears throat> not sure if that's the correct part or if it's not, could cause the problem. Also, the uh, horizontal output transistor isn't really correct for this circuit, so that could be part of it too. Although nominally, it's pretty cool. It's not hot or warm even, it's barely just room temperature. And uh, so I'm kind of burned out on this one. I still want to keep going and get it so that it works right. And then obviously now with the little degaussing thermistor gone, I need to get another thermistor in there. So this set is really just kind of trying my patience. Uh, but it's, you know, it's one of these ones that I've wanted for a long time. And so I'm kind of torn between wanting to sell it or wanting to keep going with it. But that's where we're at right now is that uh, everything's cool except for the high voltage regulation problem and yeah, the B boost is looking good uh, the rest of the voltages are looking good I'm hoping it's not the bad tripler I'm hoping it's something else because I really don't want to buy another tripler uh, but yeah so that's where we're at so thanks for watching this series so far uh, if I decide to get into it more you'll see another video otherwise other stuff to come